I'm in love with this. I'm so in love with this. And now I'm Sissy Who, welcome back to my channel. This is not a game I was planning to play at all. I just found it out because there was a um, event on Steam, which is called the Narakon Fest, I think, something like that. And uh, it is basically an event that just highlights some more narrative game. Um, so I just found this one, which has really good rating. And I was like, you know what, I kind of really I need a really uplifting game right now. I want to some play something nice and cool and just funny. And that one seemed to be pretty nice in the way that it's kind of choose your own adventure in a way. So let's see where we are going because I'm really excited and I really like the art design as well. So let's do this. Oh, we have a guest. Welcome. I was just about to tell a story. And I think I may just have found the perfect main character. When do we call you? Morgan. Morgan is cool, but uh, my name is Cece. I like a good story. name. Let us put a face to it. Ooh, I've got character creation. Okay, so... Oh, that is pretty cool. Okay, feminine, androgynous, or masculine. Let, let's do... Let's do CC, so style. Ooh, this is pretty. I like that. What is that? Is that the air color? Ooh, I like it. Okay, let's do... Oh, I like this color. I really like this color. Let's do a teal. I really like that. Um, so I don't necessarily make my character look like me. I kind of like this one. That one. That looks nice. Green and green. Oh, eye color. Oh, I like the purple. I love purple eyes. Um, and then... Where do we go with... Eh. Kind of a dark colored one. It's the arm. I don't really like the color of... Oh, perfect. Should we do something like... this yeah a bit sad oh my god character <laughs> character creation <laughs> takes forever um what about this yeah i think i like that i like purple eyes but i don't know this purple I'm not too fond of yellow gray is cool now let's go with purple. And maybe because of that purple, these airs. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Perfect. Sissy, she, her. Oh, she has a voice. Let's not. <laughs> Everyone all right? Yes. I'll be off then. Okay. See you around. Okay. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. CC, are you ready to become a legend? Ooh, yes. From the shimmer of light in the workshop, you felt safe to the broken glass in the streets, reflecting a fright. Desperation concert the stage for acts of villainy, and heroes may need to confront their demons in more ways than one. For a choice to be made, you must overcome the binding and twining of souls of bond. So strong it may just keep you both and tall. Yes, you. What will you do when the call for action beckons you to choose? Yes, you. What 
I like him. <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't know what I'm. I'm I've got, I know nothing about this game, but I really like this intro. <clears throat> Let's go. To the east, way past even the capital of Eridus, lies a small town known as Anemone Valley. And in the town sits a very special shop. Despite its modest size, this store is visited by most, for it is the only one of its kind in the town. A store that sells alchemy. It is owned by Elizabeth, a master of her craft and a well-respected among those who buy her wares. And you? You just happen to be her apprentice. Thank you for your purchase. Please come again. This is something I saw as well. There is some voice acting, which is great. Uh, I found out when I watched the trailer. <clears throat> her master is firm but kind in her teachings. She treats the herbs with religious dedication and for the better part of your life, you have been trying to learn as much as you can from her. We are running low on headache remedies. Would you mind handling the room table for a moment? Sure. So, okay, so we can choose cheerful, joking, or nervous. What will we be? Um, what kind of person do we want to be? I think we'll be cheerful on this one. Of course, I'll get to work at once. I don't know what kind of a persona I want to be right now. We'll see with the uh, different scenarios. The rune table is an artifact provided by the alchemists, two alchemists by the School of Magic. It runs on a core of control magic and can be manipulated by anyone with the proper training. It is, of course, not as powerful as an actual mage, but it is quite practical for making household charms and remedies. Headache cures being one of the more popular options. You get to work preparing the ingredients as a tall man with an intimidating glare enters the store. What can I do for you today, sir? <sighs> Spare me. Just give me the usual. Make it quick. Okay, rude. I don't want to stick around in this creepy freak show any longer than I have to. What? Wait, don't come here then. Right. One remedy coming right up. Okay, Elizabeth, you are already like much more patient than I would be. Behind the man, a shadow moves. A child peeks out, staring around the room with big, bright eyes. Oh, Poor kid. You haven't seen the kid around the shop before. By the looks of it, he's been told one too many tales of child-eating potion makers. Frighten the child, smile and wave, ignore the child. Oh, I'm going to smile and wave. Look at this cutie. You smile at the kid and give the friendly wave. This is going to probably frighten him more. Oh no, okay. At first he freezes, realizing he has been caught, but then he slowly emerges and gives the shy wave back. Elizabeth coughs to get your attention, and you realize she's looking at you expectantly. Alright, the potion. Ooh. Yes, I know. Okay, begin by placing lavender into the table. Okay, so I select you. So, turn, ooh. What? Oh, okay, so I placed both. Okay, right. Turn. What am I supposed to do? Match any pattern to the right by mixing ingredients in the center. Any pattern to the right. Standard, oh. What is that? Oh, mosquito repellent. <laughs> Okay, so I can make different potions. So headache, a basic potion that works wonder on headaches also smell nice. Okay, so basically I can make a standard potion or I can make a strong one and I want a strong one. So I need another one. Okay, why can't I move? Okay, move, I can move this one, that one, but not the first one. Oh, here we go. Uh, so I need another... I see. 
Here we go. We are good. Yes, I want to create, but how do I do that? X. Hand over the potion. Oh, this is cool. It's a nice little puzzle. You hand over the potion to Elizabeth. Here you go, sir. Oh, it was for him. Extra strong headache remedy. I didn't know it was for him. Elizabeth hands the potion to the customer, who pays with a grunt and nothing more. Do you need my help with anything else? That was interesting. What a jerk. Yeah, what a jerk. I can't believe this. Maybe he wouldn't get headaches if he removed his head from his <sighs> language, CC. Oh no, I forgot to put a. Okay, I forgot to put like a capital C in front of my name because it was written in capital. So now that's not going to have a capital C, that's going to be so annoying. <laughs> oh no! I can't restart though. Can I restart? Maybe I should restart. <sighs> okay, you know what? I'm going to restart because this is going to be fed up. I'll come right back. Okay, we are back. <laughs> And now I have a capital C in my name. Uh, I hope the, the color of her shirt is the same. I think it is. Language, you see. The man may have been behaving rudely, but magic has been feared in this nation for a long time. He was simply acting upon his fear. I'm proud of the way you've handled that. I know it's difficult to keep calm with someone like that in the store. I wasn't calm. I can't believe he talked to you like that. He could have still said thank you. I try. Um... No, I'm still going to be angry because it was really rude. I can't believe this. I can't believe that guy. You were the one helping him, and he treated you like like I see. <laughs> I understand your frustration. But people like us have to pick our battles carefully. Lest we end up in a position where we can do nothing at all. But enough of that. I have another job for you. We just used up the last of the lavender making this remedy. Would you be so kind as to go and buy some more? No, I think she will be fine. Okay, I'm going. I'll do it. Right, I'll go right away. Thank you, dear. Please, do hurry, though. We wouldn't want another angry customer to come in, only to discover I'm all out of there and go the cure. Oh. <laughs> That's why. It is so famous. It's not really a headache cure, it's a hangover cure. I got it. You gather your things and then leave the store with a small wave. Look at that! Oh, this is nice! Okay, flower shop. The flower shop smells heavenly. Strange, exotic plants are growing everywhere. Their color vibrance and glowing with the faintest hint of magic. Come in, come in. Here to pick up supplies, I presume? Oh, perfect timing. Today's been so slow. I was going quite mad. How are things? The Honor Queen has had the store for a little over the year. The first, the first full years of the small town having their own, very own mage. Oh, she's a mage. Great. Um. Oh, you know. Well, yeah, a, bit, a little bit of sarcasm. Oh, you know, the usual happy customer all around. <laughs> oh, you know, customers just really know how to make you feel appreciated for the hard work we do at the shop. Oh, dear. Ugh, that bad, huh? I guess I should count my blessing. I haven't had any customers today. It is only natural that things are a bit tense. After the Hivey Woods wilted, people are suspecting some wicked magic to be at work. Ivy woods, which of course means people are less keen on coming near us magi folks. And then I have questions. Okay, the ivy woods was it? Hmm. What happened to the ivy woods? How curious. Oh, you haven't heard? And here I thought small town news was supposed to travel fast. Yesterday, an entire section of the forest just died. I wanted to go and gather some samples, see if perhaps it's a rare disease killing the trees. But 
I can't leave the shop and I don't want to be caught out there investigating. People might start suspecting that I was the one who did it and I really don't need that kind of attention. Okay, so people don't like really magic people. Hmm. Or magic. Well, they're scared of magic. Which is interesting because magic is all around. What kind of sample do you need? I wonder... Actually... Anything would do at this point. A cutting from a dead tree, a pinch of the dirt... It could all tell me something about how it died. I'll get it for you. I'll do it. I can go and get it for you. The forest isn't that far and it, it might help. <laughs> Absolutely not. Elizabeth would kill me if she found out I'd send you the, out there alone. It's dangerous, you know. No one but trained demon hunters would or should go near the area. Okay, there are demon hunters, <laughs> which means there are demons. <laughs> no, it's better to let the officials handle this. I'm sure they'll figure out the cause soon enough. Hopefully then things will calm down. Ha! <laughs> Spoil sport. <laughs> that sounds so boring though. <laughs> Ha! We'll take it from someone who grew up in a school of kids who randomly set things on fire by accident. <laughs> okay, great. Sometimes boring is good. You have a slow day? Tell me about... No customers came by today? <laughs> You're the first. It is quite hard. By this time, I usually have at least a couple of people poke their heads in out of curiosity or anything, but today has been completely quiet. I was starting to wonder if perhaps I'd missed some kind of local holiday tradition. But I guess in the end people are just wary of magic due to what happened in the forest. It's sad. People suspect magic? What do you mean? People always suspect magic. It's always easier to blame something you don't understand, especially when you are only exposed to hearsay and rumors. The people out there don't experience the good side of magic out here like the self-driving wagons or other handy devices created by the tinkers in Aradas or the grand theaters show in the illusionist down the house well they do have you though <laughs> your shop is quite wonderful in its own right though thank you oh and I do believe people here are warming up to me after all flowers and herbs are hardly something you can create much controversy over which is also why which is <laughs> which is also why it was I and not some fireworks tinker who was sent here. You were sent here? So you didn't choose to come here yourself? <laughs> oh, oh darling. When a mage graduates from the academy, we are assigned to a shop to practice our craft. We do get make proposal for where we'd like to go, but ultimately it's up to the council to distribute the graduates. Interesting. They will consider the needs of the town and cities and the dangers the mage might pose if they work without supervision. I, for one, am quite happy with where I ended up. You like it here? Really? You really like it here? <laughs> really? I thought you'd want to be somewhere more lively, like in one of the capitals or something. Just imagine. Oh no, that's way too dull. I wouldn't have anything in a forest of brick. Out there, I'm right in the center of the greatest gardens of all. Not to mention the fascinated underground of all magic mines. The energy coursing through the soil here is completely unique, and I keep finding new specimens that would make the students back at the college green with envy. What are the fireworks tinkers? Really? Yeah, seriously, mages would just make fireworks? Of course, but they're not just fireworks, they are the best most beautiful fireworks on the continent, created to dazzle and entertain. They are marvelous sights to behold. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and like a dream, I'd love to see that one day. Actually... Mm, you'll have to go to the capital to see it, I'm afraid. Such magic has to be performed under strict supervision, but it is worth the journey for sure. Actually... Elizabeth lent me to get lavender, if you have any. Oh, you'll love this. Of course, of course. The world can't go around without the Madame Great Edic Mermaid, can it now? Give me a second. Go and find the herbs you ask for and you pay for your wares. Come back soon. Do say hi to Elizabeth for me when you get back. 
Okay, Queen is lovely. It is getting late, but the streets are still busy with activity. Citizens are making the final rounds, shopping and greeting friends while walking home from work. So people are going around, they just don't want to interact with the mage. A bard is sitting on the stone at the square, entertaining a small group of children, and you find yourself pausing to listen in as he spins his tail. And then, the Witch Queen of the North raised an army of demons from the depths of the mountains and laid waste to the lands. It was a time where wild magic ruled, and the people of this continent were bent under its heel. The children gasp and hold close together, and you smile. You've heard this story many times before, and now just where it's going, and know just where it's going. But then, from the ashes of a burned nation, rose seven heroes. They were the chosen ones, the paragons, and together they rallied the people and beat back the demon scourge and their evil mistress. The children cheer. He's quite good. Once the battle was over, they formed the Empire. As it was an empire. A nation governed not by magic, but by people. The first paragon traveled south and built the Seven Winds Academy, a school to teach the next generations of mages so that magic may never again be used for chaos. Okay, this is where Quinn is coming from. The second paragon traveled the continent to rid it from the remains of the witch's ilk. During his travels, other heroes chose to join his ranks. And that is how the Order of the Demon Hunters was formed. Okay, we've heard about this as well. The remaining five set out to each build a great city. The capitals. Cities that would later become the capitals of the Empire. Okay, all makes sense. And in the central capital built by Alethros, their leader, stand seven seats, each representing one of the seven rulers of the Empire. And from these seats, their successors still rule to this day. Okay. The end. There's clapping and cheering with some of the adults around Polit politely joining in. But then one child raises their hand, held tilted in curiosity in the way that only children can do. But or Mr. small dogs. Bart, sir, you say there are seven seats, but my mom says there are only six. <gasps> There's a traitor. Why should the mages have a seat? Oh. I see. Sorry, I forgot to read that. <laughs> okay, I see where this is going. The market has gone quiet. All eyes now turn to the bard who remains unfazed, smiling. <laughs> That's the thing about stories. Sometimes they don't actually end. Even if the bard has said so. They become the beginning of something new. Good save. He turns slightly, and you swear for a moment he's looking straight at you before he shrugs. <laughs> but alas, I was only paid to tell you rascals one tale for today. So, that particular sequel will have to wait for another time. Boo! There's a collection of groans and of dismay. <laughs> but the kids get up and leave. You two figure you've lingered long enough and continue on your way. Are we one of the seven heroes? <laughs> Are we the one who doesn't have a seat at the table? We'll see. You have almost reached home, but come to a halt when you hear someone cry out. Your head whip around toward the dark side streets. The people around you keep walking, ignoring the sound even as it grows louder. Can't they hear? You glance around but see no reaction. Everyone just carries on apathetically. You know you should probably do the same. You can vividly imagine Elizabeth disapproving stare. But the darkness of the alley becomes you, and you leave the busy street to investigate. Here we go. A man- oh, I know that silhouette. <laughs> I know who that guy is. A man is standing over the form of a young girl. Or what appears to be a young girl. Really? There's no need for this. I was simply a bit lost, you see. I didn't mean to wander into your town uninvited. 
just let me go, and I'll be out of your hair for good. Gone. Whoosh. <laughs> you expect me to believe that, spirit? Is your demon hunter? Think he may be. I am not fooled by your petty tricks and illusions. I see you, and I am going to make sure whatever wicked scheme you have planned ends right here. I don't like him. I swear, I'm not planning anything. Demon spawn like you don't belong in this world. Die, you filthy creature! He's going to kill her. You have to do something, but what? Your choice will influence your personality going forward. That poor girl needs my help. No way that bully is getting away with it. Um... I think I'm kind, right? That poor girl needs my help. Well, I kind of like this one, but no, let's do this one. Stop that! You're hurting her! The man spins around. His eyes are crazed, dangerous, and familiar. You. Look at me, I'm so cool. With my sleeveless jacket and my pendant. And my gelled hair. <laughs> Oof. A chill runs down your spine as something flashes in the man's eyes. You could have sworn they were almost... They almost looked red? You're that old hag's apprentice, aren't you? Oh, he's got fangs. Oof. You lure people with your pretty potions and promises of healing. But in the end, you're just the same. You... <clears throat> What's wrong with you? Magic scum like you should all just die. <laughs> okay. He moves so fast. There's a blur of movement, and then you feel a sharp pain in your chest. Did you just stab me? You look down and see the hilt of a knife. A blur of red glowing outward, staining everything. Weirdly, you almost don't feel the pain. Shock is making the strangest of thoughts suddenly relevant. So... That's what a lot of blood looks like. It's... Thicker than I imagined and... More... Red. Oof. Thank you. You really saved me there. I'm, I'm sorry this had to happen. Um, let me see. Am I dead? Ouch, yeah. He got you real good, didn't he? Pierce the heart. Humans need hearts, I am certain of that. And such a kind heart, too. I need heart and blood, please. Don't be scared. I'll fix it, I promise. It won't be easy, though. It really is in quite the state. I think I can mend it. But it needs something to stick it together. Your soul, I mean... This is going in a weird direction. No use mending the body when you're... well... dead. Okay, great. Sorry. That was rather insensitive, wasn't it? A little bit. Nothing wrong with being dead. I mean, it happens to all of us, but... Oh, right. Not important. Just a moment. I'll fix you right up. Oh. My head. My heart. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, you, you knocked your head pretty bad when you fell. I should get you a potion for that. I can do that. You blaringly force your eyes open. You are still in the alleyway, but the street has gone quiet and the afternoon light has faded. You must have been unconscious for a while. Your hand flies up to your chest, expecting to find the knife still sticking out, but there is no wound. It doesn't hurt, right? Honestly, I, I don't know much about human skin, so I, I kind of just stitched it together the best I could. Magically? What is going on? What just happened? Are you hurt? No, not are you hurt. What just happened? <laughs> oh, what is going on? Uh, yeah, what is going on? Scared. Ah! Who are you? What did you do to me? Well, I wasn't imagining this. 
<laughs> okay, that's fine. Ah! I'm sorry. Please don't yell at me. I was more thinking, like, explain to me what's going on, but that was probably the second choice. Just freaking out. You are the one yelling! Oh, right. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're safe now, though. That scary guy left, so everything's fine. Probably. Why did he leave, though? That guy was really something, though. Mm -hmm. To think a spirit would go as far as to possess a human like that. Oh, so it wasn't him. It wasn't like, I thought like all demon hunters were like, maybe it wasn't a demon hunters, but I thought that maybe they were all like super intense. But actually he was possessed by a spirit who hated magic, probably. I know the whole humans against magic thing doesn't make for the best of relationships, but there's no need to be rude. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're probably confused, right? A little bit. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, I've got a lot of questions. Who are you? So, who are you? Aha, uh -huh, right. I am so sorry. I should have introduced myself, shouldn't I? I'm Mime. Mime. I'm, uh... Now... I'm a spirit, I believe you would say. And not a demon? A, a friendly one, though. Don't worry. Okay, so demon are probably a evil, evil spirits. That guy looked like some kind of monster. That's a question. That guy. Hmm. His appearance changed all of a sudden. The horns, the red eyes. He looked like some kind of monster. My guess is that some mean spirit latched onto his anger and possessed him. The spirit must have been quite powerful too. Spark a physical transformation like that? I wonder what it was doing here. Anyway, the best course of action would be to stay far away from that guy, but... I guess you already figured that out the hard way. Mm-hmm. I died. Why was that guy harassing you? I met that guy earlier today. He wasn't nice back then either, but the way he treated you was horrible. Uh, well... You know, humans don't usually care much for spirits. We're supposedly illegal, after all. Chaotic magic, dangerous, yada yada. Illegal. This guy was particularly aggressive about it, though. His heart has a lot of hate inside it. Which is probably the reason why the mean spirit decided to take it. So they're not supposed to be in town if they're illegal? So they're not supposed to be there? At all? Mm, can't get around this. They're just supposed to stay away, basically? It's strange. One last question. Why are you here? So, thank you for saving me, but... Why are you still here? Aren't you afraid more people like that guy will show up? Well... Uh, <laughs> you see, I, I might be kinda... Sorta bound here to you. She used her powers and now she can't get away from me? What? I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. But you were all dead and broken and all the pieces didn't want to stick together. And, and, and I panicked and I, I may have somehow linked myself to your soul in order to bind it to your body. Okay, I am not going to be angry because <laughs> without her, I would die. Um, let Mime feel the consequences of her action and perhaps she will learn from them. Calm Mime down by showing her ki kindness. I mean, I have every right to be angry. Because I, I'd never asked for this, but without this I would be dead, so I'm going to be forgiving. Here. You saved my life. Yep. 
The method might not have been ideal, but I really can't blame you for helping me. I know. I should have done better and I shouldn't have... Huh? Probably going to regret this. Because at some point she will have to be really tough and then she won't be because here I didn't, you know, told her off. But let's see. It's the beauty of these games. <laughs> Discovering later on that you shouldn't have chosen this, your very first choice, you did the wrong one. That's fine. You forgive me? I... Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you! Don't worry, we'll find some way to fix this, I I'm sure of it. Hope so. So how do we fix this? There has to be a way to reverse this, right? Let's work together. Um, how do we fix this? So, you're a spirit, right? You've got an idea for how to fix this? I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I don't know how to fix this. But I, I do know someone who might. I'll take you there. Though, uh, she's going to be so mad at me. You and mine both pose and listen. While you were talking, the quiet night has erupted into a steady swell of voices. A sinister feeling makes the hairs of your neck stand on end, and Mime scurries closer to you, the small spirit having grown quite pale. Something doesn't feel right. I think we should leave now. She takes you by the sleeve and you follow her to the end of the alley, only to stop short at the sudden smell slithering down the street. Smoke. Your eyes grow wide as you spot the flickering lights in the distance, a feeling of dread settling in your stomach. <gasps> the shop! Oh no. <gasps> Did the guy go back and burn down the shop? Uh, hey! Wait! Oh no. Oh my god. They're burning down the shop. By the time you get there, a large group of people has gathered in front of the shop and the wicked tension is in the air. Child eater! What? Get out of our town! Burn the witch! The yelling feels unbearably loud. A young man picks up a rock and throws it through the window. The sound of shattering glass is drowned out by the cheers rising from the crowd. How could anyone do such thing? Bastard is destroying my home, such gratitude. I think this bastard has destroyed my home. So, <laughs> if any of you is a bit triggered by the fact that I don't always choose the same path, I'm just choosing what feels right at the moment. I'm not like, I know I was going to say, how are we going to play this character? But really I'm just choosing what I think is the best option and what I would, I would basically do. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of angry right now. I can't believe this. What do they think they're do? What do they think they're doing? <laughs> well, it's not actually the fault. Not entirely. I mean, they have been caught up in a frenzy. Their fears are being amplified by very strong spirit magic. It's turning them all towards something inside the shop. How can you tell? Hmm? How do you know that? <laughs> it's a spirit thing. I can sort of sense the essence of other spirits. Usually, it doesn't really matter, because there aren't really a lot of us around. But something's here. It has its sights set on something inside that store. Mm-hmm. Fears? Really? These people don't look very frightened to me. Maybe, but... It's true, though. We all fear something, but usually you kind of tell whether you should act on it, or if the fear is irrational. These people have had their fears stoked, and it is so great that it has turned to rage. They have lost sight of themselves completely. Why are we not affected? Well... Look, I'm not feeling my bravest at the moment either. So why am I not tearing stuff up? About that. This type of spirit magic doesn't really affect me. Since you're bound to me now, I guess you're protected as well. Ooh. That is great, actually. This is going to be really useful. We've got to do something. So... We can't just keep standing here. There's got to be something we can do. Yeah, because Elizabeth is still in there. Um... We really shouldn't get any closer. If they catch us here, they're not telling what they'll do. 
Those people need our help. No, Elizabeth might be still in there. We've gotta go. Look, Mime, I know it's scary, but I need to find my teacher, Elizabeth. She might still be in the shop and I can't just leave her. <sighs> I... You are very kind, aren't you? Kind of wish. Never mind. Okay, okay, I'll take you. Let's just keep our head down, okay? With Mime's guidance, you go around the back of the building. There's no way to enter, but there's a closed window and a nicely sized rock. Yeah, you know, let's break another window. There we go. You break the window and carefully climb through the broken glass. Oof, the shop is still intact. Okay. The shop is dark and smells faintly of burned rosemary. Okay. Very sneaky. The sneaky duo, that's us. That's our new name. A door burst open. Get out of my home, you... It's me. I'm back. Child. Are you okay? I was so worried. I was so worried. <gasps> Elizabeth. Thanks, Elithoros. You are safe. I was so worried. <laughs> it's fine, Sissy. Don't you worry. It would take more than that to take down this old witch. But what about you? You were gone for so long. I was just about to leave and go looking for you when those hooligans started gathering out front. Well, I died and then I came back and then I had my soul stitched up to a spirit and now I'm back. <laughs> and I have the lavender. I didn't forget. What happened? And who is that? <laughs> Hi. Well, you see. <laughs> I think it's exactly what I just did. Yeah, let's see. Actually. Right, so you see, my main heart and I here have accidentally gotten ourselves into a bit of a magical accident earlier. By the seven. Have, have you bound yourself to the spirit? Yeah. Oh, what were you thinking, child? Do you have any idea what you have done? Well, I was dead, so. I'm sorry, I couldn't just send them by and do nothing. Um. Oh, because I saved her. I don't know, I'm not going to apologize because I nearly died. Um. I think it would be that one. That one looks a bit passive aggressive to me. I like sarcasm, but this one doesn't fit well. I could just stand by and do nothing. No. It didn't mean for this to happen, but I would do it again to protect mine. Elizabeth sighs. Child, your kind heart is going to get you into trouble one day. Trouble that I will not be able to save you from. Well, my heart is completely exploded, so don't worry about it. Speaking of trouble, too late. Thank you for trying. Speaking of trouble... <laughs> yeah, since we're on that topic, you seem to have a problem with angry villagers that we might want to address soon. There's a crash as another window shatters. I just don't understand what is happening. How odd. These people are acting completely mad, like something is driving them insane. About that. Um, that's exactly what's happening. I'm not sure what, but I can sense something here in the shop. Some kind of powerful magic is drawing them here. Powerful magic? But that's impossible. This is an alchemy shop. The only vaguely magical item in here is... the alchemy table. Well, maybe that's it. It's really weird that some sentences are voice acted and not others. It's quite random. Something flashes in Elizabeth's eyes, and you all turn to the, sta the table standing in the corner. It can't be. What? 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 The light suddenly dims, and you whip around to stare at the shop window. <laughs> the crowd outside is growing louder, their vile chants and jeers melting together into a booming icor of hate. 
A dark shadow is spreading through the frame of the window, blocking out the light from the torches outside. It's the same shadow as that was in, behind that guy. The star indicates a choice where you can call upon others for assistance. Oh, okay. Mime, what is that? Stay back is dangerous. Yeah, that's just gross. Um, I think I can ask her. What the? What is that thing? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. It looks like a spirit of some sort, but... It's a demon. Hmm, there we go. This thing, it reeks of dark magic. It's trying to breach the barrier I put around the shop. Oh. The darkness now completely covers the glass, which creaks and twists under the strain. Then cracks. Oof. Stand your ground. Great, we should run. Um, I think I would just say great. Right. This is fine. The window shatters. Oh no! My table! Oh, I didn't see that that skull had an eye patch. <laughs> it's cool. Heat washes over you, and you shield your face as every single piece of glass in the shop is blown out. The pressure forces you back, stumbling, and for a moment, all you see is red. Again. Ugh. You pick yourself up from the store. Someone is screaming in the distance, and there is a strong smell of burning wood. The shop. It's been completely destroyed. From the rubble, a tall, dark shape rises up to tower over you. Is it the man? Wow, it doesn't look that frightening. <laughs> it looks quite cute, actually. But thick. The humans demon fire, but flee when their wish is granted. Glowing eyes zero in on you. A tall, lanky shape standing in the middle of the destroyed shop. What is it? A little shop assistant. I wonder. As well. What lies within your heart? Fear. Anger. The glow of the soulless eyes intensified, and you feel cold all over as its gaze pierces through you. How disappointing. My cat is looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm not crazy, I'm trying to make voices, which is really hard. Sorry, I'm bad at this. People like you are the worst. Keeping your head bowed every day, taking the scorn of common people, like you somehow deserve it. I can see it all. See how the people of this town, these pathetic weak mortals, are mocking you while you do nothing. Why should the imbecile be away down on you? You are the spear. Your talent should leave them pecking at your feet. So why? Oh, this is why it was so angry. I thought it was looking down on us, but actually it was like, I'm just, I'm just, you know, you should be much better than this. So you're just ridiculous. What drives you down this path? Faith, no, dignity. Oh, I believe in the good of humanity. Mm. I won't stoop to their level. Mm. I don't need your help to get what I want. Interesting. Um, what is the question? <laughs> your talents should leave them begging as you feet. I think tenacity. Yeah, I don't need your I help. I want change, but I can make it myself. I don't need to make a deal with a demon to get what I want. The creature begins to glow a soft green color. It lets out a frustrated scream and charges at you. <sighs> Look out! Go back to the hell you came from, demon! New character! Woo! The demon stumbles, struck from behind. It kills over, clinging to its side, where it shapes its cracking like broken shards of glass. Oh, it's cracking, sorry. You see broad shoulders. A woman steps in front of you, shielding you from the demon. 
A sword gleams in her hands as she boldly faces off against this monster. Are you all right? Who? Romance. Straight away. Like, oh yeah, you look so cool. You do look pretty cool, but I'm not going to engage in a romance until I see all the different characters. I take my romances really seriously in this kind of games, so I went to see what I can look at. I think I saw that in the trailer already. In the not the trailer, the the beginning anime. I want to she's pretty cool. I really like her. Let's see, I'm not going to romance her straight away. I'm going to be cool. Like a cool cucumber. <laughs> I'm fine, timid. Yes, thank god you arrived. I totally had that. No, thanks god you've arrived. I'm okay. Thank you. Whew, I'm going to stay behind you and that sword you're holding. Victoria! I am so glad to see- Ooh, she knew her. Quiet, Mime. You and I are going to have a talk as soon as this is over. Oh, she's the one Mime wanted to take us to. Okay, makes sense. And she's already quite angry. Mm. The demon screeches and writes itself, the bleeding gash on its side glowing like hot metal. You fool! You'll be bad for this! Ooh, she has a special sword then. It rushes forwards, but Victoria is far too quick. She swiftly strikes it down, spraying shards of darkness from the fresh wound. I, I kind of picture that. that. That looks really cool in my mind. <laughs> the glow is steadily growing stronger. You begin to feel drawn towards the light, as if... It is calling out to you. Um, I'm feeling kind of weird. Mm hmm. Look, the table. The alchemy table is glowing the same shade as the demon. It pulses and breathes like living things, lifting itself off the floor. Shifting and shaping into a new form, it suddenly flies right at you. You reach out to catch. Match the pattern to banish the demon. Okay. Uh, what is turn? Okay, I'm turning like this. And what is that? Oh, okay, easy. Uh, so I assume I have to match the pattern in the middle. There we go. No. Matching the pattern though. What? What? Oh. Okay. Now they're changing the rules. Okay. I need a. Okay. I see. So I need a red here. Need to move that red up there. Sorry, I'm having a hard time reaching that one. Okay. Okay, you move. You... I need a red up there. I don't need you there. Okay. I'm bad at this, but I will get it. Don't be upset. Don't, don't be upset. <laughs> okay. Um... So I need to move that red here. There we go. And then I can move you. Perfect. Here we go. <laughs> this is going to take so much longer later on. Be ready. Prepare yourself. Light bursts from your hand. It shoots outwards in a beam, striking the nightmarish creature square in the chest. The demon withers and shakes, the light bursting it open from within, and then it crumbles, turning to ash with a quiet sigh. There is only stillness. In your hand is what remains of the alchemy table. A pendant of sorts. 
The family of cogs and wheels still make up the main body, but five small wounds are now carved into an upper ring, one of them glowing faintly with a strange sort of magic. You are feeling woozy, like your legs are about to give out from under you. What just happened? Thanks God it's over. Is everyone alright? Uh, I think what just happened? What? What in the world just happened? <sighs> I would like to know that as well. Gold steel presses against your throat. The woman, Victoria, is glaring at you. Okay, so she has basically her thought at my throat. Great. <sighs> what did you do? I don't know. Right, I'm the enemy here. Just try to stay calm. I think I don't know. I don't know. Whoa. I don't know. It's just a sword did thing. I have no idea why. And please, can we keep the sword out of this? I love that answer. <laughs> Doria glares, but lowers the, slow, the sword slightly. I can't believe this. Oh, mime. Would you be so kind as to tell me what is going on here? Victoria words drips with tension. Mime looks very, very small when she steps out from behind you. Um... Well, you see, um, I'm not entirely sure myself. It felt like I had a connection with that thing for a moment. So that's how it is. Mm, the spirit locket. Elizabeth is staring at the glowing amulet in your hands with a burly mustardness that puts you on edge. It must have reacted to the presence of the demon. It appears that it absorbed the power of that fiendish creature, sending it away for good. That is good, right? We're safe. Well, that's totally the end of that. <laughs> that is good, right? Um... So it's over. The crisis was averted and everything's fine now. Right? Victoria glares at you darkly. No. Everything is most certainly not fine. Use of illegal magic and binding yourself to spirits? You are coming with me to Eridus to stand trial for what you've done. <sighs> On whose order? Elizabeth moved to stand between you and Victoria protectively. Please help me. First Commander Alithia. Victoria twists her collar to reveal the insignia of Third Paragon, and you feel dread run down your spine like ice. Oof. I'm toast. Of all the people to be discovered by, it just had to be a knight. But I stopped the demon. I can't believe this. You can't be serious. I just saved us from that thing, and now you're going to arrest me? <sighs> oh, spare me the outrage. Whatever your motivation, it doesn't change the fact that you have broken the law. I can't just let you walk free while you pose such an obvious risk. Hear me out. But Victoria, don't you see? This might be a good thing. <sighs> what? <laughs> we sold the spirit away, didn't we? In fact, it's really lucky that we're here. I bet the shop would have burned down completely if you and Sissy hadn't been here to save it. <sighs> be that as it may, it doesn't excuse the illegal use of chaotic magic, so... Ooh, phone ringing. <laughs> Oh my god, it is the phone. <laughs> Victoria is interrupted by a strange buzzing sound coming from her jacket. She and mine visibly pale. <sighs> of all the times. Oh. Just don't take it. P pretend we're not here. Oh my god, it's exactly like a phone call. Victoria glares and pulls out a small glowing orb that is pulsating inst insistently with light. She closes her eyes and breathes in deep as if saying a quiet prayer. There's a flash of light and an image appears. Victoria, what's going on? You didn't call in for your last report. That projection? The image of a woman in uniform appears in a glowing light and you blink in surprise. You've heard about crystal communicators the government uses to transmit conversation, but you've never seen one in person before. Oh my god, it is, it is an hologram. Victoria straightens up in her presence, all emotions hidden by a professional tone. Apologies, Commander. I'm afraid that the situation has become more complicated. Is that the Paragon? A 
Aletheros mercy. Oh, Don't tell me you lost the spirit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Mimas still with me, but the incident appears to have spread. A demon appeared in town tonight. I suspect there are more out there. The number of casualties. Zero. Uh, none for now. However, half of one. We were half dead. I mean, technically, the alchemist was dead for a while earlier, but you know. Uh... We managed to dispose of the threat for now, but I fear this could still escalate. I know you want to ask, Victoria. But we cannot dispatch any more knights to the area. For now, you will return to Eridus with the spirit. We will regroup from here and determine the proper course of action. I... I... understand. We're just going to leave. So... Spirits are illegal. But... The government is working with spirits. And I've been using illegal magic, but she bound. Eh, I'm a bit confused right here. There's some stuff that doesn't make sense. Um, just going to leave. What about the townspeople? That's some knightly courage. Um, I think you're just going to leave. So you're just gonna leave the town unprotected? What kind of knights would do that? Tell them. Victoria, who is this? I'm the half dead girl. <sighs> Another complication. Yeah, that works too. Actually, the alchemist here might just be the solution to your problem. <sighs> Mime. No. It's all right, Victoria. Let us hear what the spirit wishes to share. Thank you, ma'am. You see, we got into a little accident earlier i won't bore you with the details but the good news is that the two of us together are really good at stealing away those big old meanie spirits you're so worried about is that so the woman turns to you what is your involvement in all of this i don't even know where to start it was an accident i'm getting stabbed and protecting my home um, I got stabbed. <laughs> Getting stabbed was a real call to action for me, so... The woman looks rather disturbed, but shakes her head in a sigh, with a sigh. Ah, an unlucky bystander then. And this magic you use to get rid of the demons. Unlawful, I assume. Wow, law and order, right? <sighs> Does it matter though? Would they rather have like demon roaming around? But no one got hurt. Yeah. We just sealed away the one who was wreaking havoc in the shop here. I'm confident that if we just stay in town and investigate, then we'll find a solution to the problems you're having in no time. Oh, that's stretching it. <laughs> a lovely proposition. But tell me this, spirit. If I allow you to roam free, how can I trust that you won't just run away again? Okay, so she was kind of a prisoner then, maybe. Um, because I'm so nice? Yay. I cannot trust you. There is more at stake here than mere townsfolk. It is a risk I will not take. Mere townfolk? I don't like you either. These people are... Ugh. I'll vouch for the child, Commander. Do they know each other? Elizabeth stepped forward, having been strangely silent until now. Is that romantic music I hear? Like nostalgic romantic music? Alithia looks startled. Elizabeth, it has been so long. Mm hmm. I feel fate is playing some cruel trick on us. Adding you to this unholy mix. Another holy knight as well. Oh. Victoria and Mime both look completely flabbergasted by the familiar tone used by the two women. 
You must admit you're also curious about how your teacher came to know one of the Empire's commanders so closely. Perhaps. The young one is my apprentice. I can vouch for the contents of her heart. And, if you will let me, take full responsibility for what we both know must be done. It is not fair for me or anyone to force upon you such a burden. You have already done enough. Now I'm curious. And I shall do this as well. Unless you wish to stop me. Oh. <laughs> I know better than to challenge you. Okay, so Elizabeth is really powerful then. Very well, Victoria. Your new mission will be to stay in town, guarding these two, as you track down any remaining demons and neutralize them. You will do what you must in order to keep a low profile. Okay, so first you have to change your clothes. <laughs> this mission cannot fail. And the truth cannot be revealed to the public. I... understood. That demons are going... roaming around, but they just saw one. Oh, no, maybe they didn't see the demon. So they don't want people to know there, were, there are demons running around and that spirits are there? Wait, what? Don't I get a say in this? I'm just an alchemist. Um, yeah, I'm just an alchemist. You want me to do what? I'm not a knight. I'm just an alchemist. Not even that, I'm just an apprentice. How can I possibly be of any help? Yeah, that's not, that's not what I wanted to say either, but... I agree. It is an unconventional situation. Mm -hmm. Normally, I would never agree to anything like this. But the situation is dire. And whatever you may think of your abilities, this first victory is proof of something else. I'm really powerful. I need you to rise to the challenge. Can you do that? Well, no choice. I want to help if I can. I don't want this. Um, sure? I think I would help, right? I'm just scared, but I think I would help. Um, but I'm scared. But I will help. These creatures are obviously dangerous. That would be my persona. I'm scared, but I want to help, but I also get really angry. <laughs> a, bit, a bit of a mixed, a mixed behavior here, but hey, only human, right? If there's any way I can help stop them, so no more people will get hurt, then I'll do my best. Yeah, that's a bit too much of a goody to shoes answer, but okay. You have a good heart. No, I don't have the heart anymore, actually, but okay. I wish you luck. Thank you. I don't like you, but thank you. I think we need luck right now. The image disappears and a tense silence falls over the group. That went well. Right? Nope. No one's answers. <laughs> Chapter one. The ballet. And that's how you became the unlikely defender of Anemone Ballet. We are going to stop right here because I don't want to get started with another, another thing. Oh, I'm in love with this. I'm so in love with this. I think this is going to be so cool. Uh, I love all the characters, I love the art style, I love the music, I love the atmosphere. It's exactly the kind of book I would love to read or the, the anime show I would love to watch. Uh, right down my alley, I love this. So I hope you like it as well and you will uh, follow me on this ride and I will see you next time and I so want to play the next episode. <laughs> I have to stop here today unfortunately because it's already really late. So I will see you next time and uh, I wish you a really good day. Bye bye.